Okay, hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston, and today I'm going to be covering 10 tips to help you use expressions in After Effects better. And because it's the holidays, Euchre Media is giving away 10 copies of its Smart Tools Bundle. If you already have the Smart Tools Bundle, you can actually get all of its courses for free instead, and I'll talk more about how to enter this giveaway at the end of this video. So let's jump into After Effects and get to it. Alright, so we're going to start simple. If you select A layer or multiple layers and tap EE -E on your keyboard, that's the shortcut to display all expressions for all properties on the selected layers. Depending on your display settings, expression text can sometimes be small and hard to read, and there is actually a way to make it display larger. So with the expression editor active, just hold control and then scroll up with your mouse wheel and the expression text displays larger and easier to read. So you probably already know that you can use the pick whip to connect the value of one property to the value of another property, and After Effects will automatically write the expression that creates that link. But you can also link properties across compositions, and to do that, you just select the Timeline tab for one of the two compositions that you're linking either to or from, and with Command or Control held, you can drag it so that that timeline now floats above the After Effects interface. And with both timelines now visible, you can pick whip from the property in one composition to the property in another composition, and After Effects will write the appropriate code. Now, this is a little less common with the advent of master properties a couple years ago, but in certain situations, like complex expression rigs or templates, this can come in handy. So in this expression here, on the top line, we have a variable called ID, and it's using this split expression to pull the number one from the end of our layer name, and it's using that to find an effect named color space one on our controller layer. But this section right here where it says, quote, color, space, quote, space, plus, space, <laughs> ID, it would be easy for me to forget to put, for example, this space right here. And if I click away, that'll break the expression. So in my opinion, an easier, maybe more readable way to write this would be with template literals. And that looks like this. Using just a little bit of JavaScript, we type in backtick, and then we can just type our effect name, color, space, and then we say dollar sign, open curly bracket, ID, or our variable name, close curly bracket. And if we click away, now After Effects is reading this as color one, and it finds the effect that we're looking for. And by not having to type space plus space, I feel like this is a little easier to read and a little less likely to make a mistake. And I should mention that also within these curly brackets, you can still do math, like math.round, math.floor. Uh, you can do arithmetic. So if I say divided by three on the top line, within these curly brackets, I can say times three and click away and it still works. And this is just scratching the surface with template literals. If you'd like to learn more, I'll link to this page where you can just read yourself silly all about the topic. In the expression editor, you can duplicate a line or selection of code with the shortcut Control or Command D. If you select multiple lines of code and hit Tab, it will indent them. For simple if-else statements like this, where if the checkbox is off, the opacity is 25, and if it's on, it's 100, you actually can write this in a simpler way, like this. So here we have the condition, if the checkbox equals zero, then a question mark, followed by the argument if it's true, then the value will be 25%, a colon, and then the argument if it is false, 100%. These are called ternary operators, and if you'd like more information, I will link to this page in the description of this video. So it's common to declare variables either with nothing before the variable name or with the term var for variable. And this works just fine, but there are two other ways to declare variables that I'd like to introduce you to that are a little bit more efficient, but they do come with a few things to keep in mind. And people who know JavaScript probably already know what I'm gonna say. The first is const for constant and let. Now both of these in this Ultra simple example work just fine, but let me show you the differences in this next example. So in this expression, our output variable equals 100, and then we change it to 150. So if we change our var to const, and we click away, it breaks, because const or constants are for variables whose values never change. And in this case, we're saying it equals one thing, and then we're saying it equals another thing, 
And because After Effects was told up front that this would never change, it breaks the expression. So constants are only for variables whose values won't change. But if we were to say let and click away, now it works because let can be used for variables whose values do change. And I wanna point out that as soon as you start using const and let instead of var or nothing, you're entering into JavaScript's strict mode and starting to deal with something called the scope. So here's one example of how you could get yourself into trouble if you don't understand what's going on. So in this code, we declare a variable and we assign it the string nothing and we use let, so it's okay to change. And if the time is less than one, then output now says less than one second, else write more than one second. If we click away, this actually is working just fine. If we go above one second, it says more than one second, less than one second, less than one second. But if we were to declare this variable inside the curly brackets here, so we say let output equal less than one second and click away. Now, that first line of code that says if it's less than one second, display less than one second, it's not working at all. And it's broken because we declared our variable using let, so we're in strict mode in JavaScript, inside these curly brackets. And then in another set of curly brackets, we're looking at the same variable. So this is starting to get into a topic that is far beyond the scope of this video, but I wanted to make you aware that this sort of thing can happen using let and const. And if you'd like much, much more information on this, I will link to this strict mode page in the description of this video. Sometimes when writing and debugging After Effects expressions, it can be helpful to know the value of a variable before you get to the end of the expression. So in this case, we have this variable called ID, and we're taking the end of our layer name and multiplying it by 10. So we're taking, in this case, four and multiplying it by 10 to get 40 for our rotation. But if, what if we wanted to check that our ID variable is in fact pulling the four from the end of our layer name? Well, we can write throw, and then the variable we want to check, and then click away. And we get an error because throw actually breaks the expression. So you don't want to have that in there when you're rendering. It's just for checking values. And if we click into our expression editor, we see that our error is four, which means that the value of our ID is four, and it is pulling the correct number from the end of our layer name. So if I change this to five, and then we click back into the editor, our error value is five, and we know that our ID variable is pulling the right value. To remove expressions from multiple properties is pretty simple. You just hold Alt, click on one of the stopwatches, and then you just drag through all the stopwatches with the expressions you want to remove. There's also a way using scripts, and I will link to this website, Patrick Butler's website, that has that script, and you can create a K-bar button out of that script, and select a bunch of layers, click the button, and it removes all the expressions at once. All right, so this giveaway, 10 people are going to get the Euchromedia Smart Tools bundle, or if they already have the bundle or they don't want it or whatever, they can have the Euchromedia courses instead, all the courses. And the way you enter this giveaway is very simple. You just click the link on the Facebook post that has this video on it. That's it. I guess you do have to be part of the Euchromedia Facebook group to see that post, but you just click the link, fill out the form, and then you're entered in the contest. And one week after this video has been published, the winners will be contacted. That's it. All right, that is the whole video. If you have any other expression tips, definitely leave them in the comments so others can benefit. And otherwise, it is the season, so happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope you have a wonderful and safe time. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day.